This is I Hear Things for Friday, March 4th, 2022. What podcasting's best customers think of podcast ads. Well, it's Research Friday. Is that a thing? It's a thing now. And I know it's been a long time since I left you without a dope rhyme to step to. And I, I hope I hope you can step to this. Before I get into a dissection of our recent super listener study, I, I wanted to share a brief addendum to my podcast about hits in podcasting that I did a couple of weeks ago. I'm a big NBA fan. You know, it's always exciting to see new draft picks come into the league and become stars. There are only 300 spots in the league for the best players in the world. Players come in, veterans age out. It's the circle of life. But imagine a league where the players never got old never lost a step, never got injured. A new draft pick would come into the league on a team that already had a lineup of Immortal Jordan, Immortal LeBron, Kareem, Bird, Magic, etc. That new player likely wouldn't make the team. And if they did, well, they'd be a phenomenon. That's what it's like for a new podcast. You enter the league and the greats are all still playing. You aren't competing against the new podcasts. You're competing against every podcast ever, and they haven't lost a step. So it's a rough go. You have to know that going in. It's hard to, it's just hard to have a hit in podcasting because of that. That doesn't mean you can't build an audience. It doesn't mean you can't make money. And maybe you'll be the next LeBron. All right, it's on to Research Friday. Or whatever day you're listening to this, it's Research Day. It's Research Day Day. So last month, my company, Edison Research and Ad Results Media, released the third edition of the Super Listener Study, which examines attitudes about quality, quantity, and effectiveness of podcast advertising among the people who hear them the most, the 37% of weekly listeners who listen to more than five hours of podcasts each week. Now, I wanted to share with you my five favorite takeaways from this study. I mean, I do love all my children equally, but these five, I think, will resonate with you. Uh, so I'm going to share these with you and what I think they mean for podcasters, especially podcasters who are looking to monetize. So here we go. Let me expose myself to less advertising. We have tracked this one for three years, but this year we saw a pretty big jump in the percentage of super listeners who say they're trying to cut ads out of their life. We asked a question, how important is it to you to limit your exposure to advertising. Uh, and in 2020, uh, 27% said very important, 23 important. That adds up to 50. In 2021, it was 30 and 29, which adds up to 59. So that number jumped from 50 to 59 for the percentage of super listeners who say it's important to them to limit their exposure to advertising. Now, we see these this kind of phenomenon echoed all throughout the data. 94% of super listeners have a subscription to at least one video streaming service and over half to a premium service like HBO Max. Over three quarters also subscribe to a premium audio service like Spotify or Sirius XM. And all of these services are largely commercial free. It's really difficult to reach these consumers. And we know from 16 years of research in the podcasting space that this particular group of humans has a lot of money, and spends a lot of money. And they generally don't want ads telling them how to spend it. So they use some of their disposable income to subscribe to multiple commercial-free services and options. And they're also spending more and more time with one particular medium that, so far, has not been inundated with ads. My power is rising. We define super listeners with a bar that we set internally based on previous consumption patterns. And for trending purposes, we've maintained it at five or more hours per week of podcast listening so that we aren't constantly moving the goalposts. This year, as I mentioned earlier, about 37% of weekly listeners fit into this category. And that's up last year from, well, no, it says here 37%. That's right. In aggregate, the percentage of listeners in the five plus club did not change year over year. Now, does that mean that the space is flat? Far from it. In fact, underneath all of this, the surface is incredibly active. There are two forces at play. Number one, there's a significant influx of new casual listeners who are discovering podcasts through platforms like Spotify or YouTube. 
Now, they may only be in it for one show, or maybe they just bounce around and catch a few every week at random. They bring the average number of podcasts and the time spent listening to podcasts down, but they are driving the reach of podcasts, and any healthy medium is going to have a mix of casual, moderate, and heavy consumers. Now, given that downward pressure on the amount of time spent listening to podcasts, how is that 37% flat? Well, I bet you can guess. Among super listeners, in 2019, they listened to 9.8 hours of podcasts per week. In 2020, that number was 10.5. And this year, it's 11.2. To quote the great Northern Irish philosopher, Liam Neeson, that's bananas. Now, I have to be honest here. Uh, Though I'm certainly in the super listener tier myself, I'm not sure I could manage 11.2 hours per week. And I work in podcasting. If you love podcasts, you really love podcasts. Because this number doesn't necessarily have to go up, right? You're not getting more time in your day. So to tie this back to the first point, these increasingly hard-to-reach consumers who are actively avoiding ads aren't exactly hiding. It's pretty obvious where they are for 11 hours a week. Now, I'll get back to them in a moment. But I had another quick thought about the two bulges in the distribution of the time spent listening data between super listeners and newer casual listeners to podcasts. If you knew that the person listening to your podcast wasn't looking for another podcast, how would that change your calls to action or your cross promotions? Be an interesting exercise to role play that. I hadn't really thought that one through, so consider that one your homework, and I'm a tough grader. Anyway, back to our increasingly super, super listeners. Cognitive dissonance. Now, we've established that this particular segment of the population does not like ads, hates them, precious. Now, consider that as you consider these data, and I, by the way, could have picked any one of about 10 other graphs in this report that would say something similar. We ask, compared to other places where you might hear advertisements, does hearing an advertisement on a podcast make you more likely, less likely to purchase, or have no effect? Now, in 2020, 54% said it would make them more likely to purchase a product. And in 2021, 56%. So that's up two percentage points. Now, this is exactly the kind of data point you could easily gloss over without all the context I've just given you. Devoid of that context, I suppose you could look at that increase in more likely to purchase a product as nice, but maybe not statistically significant. And you'd be right. But now consider this in a different light. 56% of these highly active ad avoiders, or ha, are telling you that podcast ads work on them. In fact, 50% agree that podcast ads are the best way to reach them, period. Now, I've said several times on this podcast that there is no endemic halo effect for an ad run on a podcast versus other media if it's the same ad. But the potential for an ad on a podcast is significant. When there is that magical match between context, content, execution, and the relationship a host has with their audience, well, you get data points like this one. When price and quality are equal, do you do you agree that you prefer to buy products from companies that advertise or sponsor on the podcasts that you regularly listen to? In 2019, that number was 43% who agreed with that. This year, it's 53%. That is a significant increase, right? So 53% of super listeners now say when price and quality are equal, they prefer the products from companies that advertise or sponsor on their favorite podcasts. Done right, podcast advertising is less about increasing top of mind awareness and it's more about creating top of mind preference. But let's not get carried away. Now these data taken as a whole would seem to indicate that we haven't yet ruined podcasting with advertising, but make no mistake, no medium is invincible to that. Podcasting is eminently ruinable. In fact, the latest super listeners data shows that we may not have fully gone off the rails here, but podcasting is picking up speed in a dangerous turn. Compared to one year ago, do you think that the total number of ads in the podcasts you regularly listen to has increased, stayed the same, or decreased? The increased percentage has gone from 52 to 56 to 59 this year. That's a trend, my friend. 
Next question. Compared to one year ago, do you think the length of the average advertising break in the podcasts that you regularly listen to has gotten longer, stayed the same, or gotten shorter? Gotten longer has gone from 38 to 41 to 43. Now, I would focus your attention here on the trending, which is unambiguous. It's going up. Perceptions of the number of ads and the length of ad breaks are increasing. Now, this can be down to two reasons, one or both of which can be true. Number one, there are more ads in podcasts today than there were a year or two ago. Could be. Number two, there are more bad ads in podcasts today, which make the breaks and the quantity seem worse. Now, here's an analogy that I hate, the frog in slowly boiling water meme. It's one of the most overused cliches in the English language. If you're going to use this analogy, you'd better earn it. You can't just toss it off without doing your homework. So I did. In preparation for preparing this podcast, I boiled over 100 frogs, some slowly and some quickly. And I also slowly froze some iguanas in trees. And sure enough, 200 amphibians later, it's true. We don't know we're in trouble until it's too late. Now, I worry more about the bad ads than I do the quantity of ads. I'm not one of those who fears programmatic advertising and podcasting. The potential is there to give us better targeting, more relevant messages. It's all there. That potential is enormous. But I will say this. In the three years that we have conducted the Super Listener Study, we have asked a question about all major media types about whether or not there were too many commercials on that medium compared to the others. In all three years, podcasting has been at the bottom of that list. That's the good one. Live TV is currently at the top, which means they're the worst. But the percentage you think podcasting has too many ads has more than doubled from 10% in 2019 to 22% this year, which is nudging it closer and closer to the 28% for magazines. And in fact, there's a whole bunch kind of in there from 28 to 30%. If podcasting starts to nudge into that 28 to 30 percent range with that too many commercials question, well, then I think podcasting is starting to behave like any other medium in terms of perceived ad load. Now, different people will feel differently about that, I suppose. Depending if you're on the content side, this may make you sad, or the sales side, you made your quota. Beachfront property. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with from this great piece of research, and I'm admitting my bias here is the answer to the one, of, one of the questions we get asked the most. What works better, live host-read ads or pre-recorded spots? I mean, I think we all know the answer to this one, but it's important to see it quantified. Now, here's what we found this year. We ask a question, what is your opinion of podcast advertising that uses, and we give four things here, personalized discussions about products or sponsors by the hosts. In other words, it's just part of the content. Uh, live host reads sponsorship messages, or pre-recorded ads not read by the host. And we give a five-point favorability scale. Uh, I'm going to give you the very favorable and somewhat favorable added together here. So at the top of this list, in terms of favorability, personalized discussions about products or sponsors, 56% favorability. Live host reads, 50%. Sponsorship messages, 48%. And pre-recorded ads not read by the host, 36% favorability. Now, when you can get your message out there in the flow of an actual conversation in the podcast, that's clearly the most effective form of messaging with 56% of super listeners indicating favorability. And I'll repeat what I said earlier. This is a cohort that spends money to avoid ads, and the majority of them tell us they are favorable towards this type of ad. So let, let that sink in a bit. Now, these kinds of messages, along with live host reads, are clearly the top performers. We all know this. But they aren't the only performers. In the Super Listener Study webinar, Marshall Williams, the CEO of Ad Results Media, and there were our, our partners in this, I think he said this best. Host read ads are the beachfront property of podcasting. And I hate it when someone beats me to a great analogy, Marshall, but you did. But the other properties also have value. Pre-recorded ads not read by the host, basically radio spots, still show some favorability with 36% of super listeners. And I think this is less about them saying, yes, more Geico ads, please. And more about an acknowledgement that this is great content and these ads are the price. 
Uh, if you're monetizing your content, I would encourage you to grab a copy of the Super Listener Study from Edison Research and Ad Results Media. There are all kinds of great nuggets to help you position the medium to buyers and advertisers. Uh, and that's a wrap for this week. I'll be back in a couple of weeks with an infinite dial preview palooza. That's right. It's time for the study that is most near and dear to my heart, the infinite dial, which I've worked on since 2004. I'll be presenting it live on stage with Wondery CEO Jen Sargent at Podcast Movement Evolutions on March 23rd. And the last podcast movement was the last event I attended. I might actually be giddy. I hope to see you there, but there will be a way to watch online if not. Uh, if you've enjoyed this podcast or any other podcast that I've done, your standards are suspect. But that aside, uh, you can always support the show at buy a coffee.com. Sorry, I said buy a coffee.com. No, it's buy me a coffee.com. Don't just buy any coffee. Buy one for me. Uh, buy me a coffee.com slash Tom Webster. Always appreciate your support. That's it for this week. I'll be back in a couple. Uh, really appreciate you listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you.